So, Vicky, when we're starting, Thank uh, you. I need to make an apology. I need to finish at 6.30 today. That's fine. Thank you. And yeah. I think, um, Sevda, I'm going to welcome now. You also have to go at 6, don't you? I should leave earlier than that because in 6 we have iftar time. No, yes. now it's Ramadan. Yes. Um, yeah, I should pre prepare, I mean, uh, something to eat and I should leave uh, earlier than that. Maybe um, 5 30 should, uh, would be great. <laughs> well, let, while Sevda is talking, let me just introduce um, her to you all. So, Sevda, um, we're very fortunate to have Sevda. She's. Um, she comes highly recommended. She's got a lot of experience with Islamic education and also religious education. Although you're no longer working in that field, are you, at the moment? Yeah, now I'm working in a different uh, sector. But I, um, I, I've worked as a teacher uh, more than 10 years as a religious education teacher. And also I worked as a teaching assistant in the UK after coming to the UK. And you're from Turkey, aren't you, originally? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, so just to say, I'm really, really pleased to welcome you, Seb Day, as, as our um, prospective Islamic representative. Um, be, because of the vagaries, which Lizzie will explain, um, Seb Day is not a, um, she is unable to vote at the moment uh, on at the meeting, but we can at least um, welcome her and, and know that who she is when she next comes. Lizzie, could you just explain briefly why, at what, where we're at with the process at the moment for Seb Day? Yep, so just to let everyone know, uh, Sevday's uh, nomination has been put to the executive member for Children, Young People and Learning um, as Sacre as a council body. All nominations have to be verified by the executive member. So that's with him at the moment. And I think it's for sign off next week. So Sevday is all but a member of Sacre, but without voting rights at the moment until that's formalised. Good. Well, that's lovely. Um there's a number of people saying they have to leave early. That's fine. We'll we'll try we'll try and get through things as quickly as possible. So we make we'll see how we go with the agreed syllabus consultation. So um, Anne um, has been working very hard on developing the agreed syllabus, and we'll just do a quick introduction to uh, what she's done so far, and then we're going to put you into discussion groups for you to just give us some feedback on what you think of the the syllabus that you've re received yesterday, I believe. I'm sorry it was a bit short notice, but I think you've been working to a very tight schedule, Anne, haven't you? And yeah, over that was you. yeah, that was only the latest version of it, uh, yeah. which was which had taken on board all the previous feedback that I had received, some of which was from uh, Bracknell Forest people. So I think you'd seen version seven or eight. And then uh, I, I've taken on board some of the feedback to produce the one you received yesterday, which was probably version nine. As you can see, this is some um, complex. And next week I am meeting with uh, the two other advisors from the other uh, Berkshire Sacres. So David, who is advisor to Slough, Reading and um, West Berkshire, and Angela, who is advisor to Wokingham. And we are going to be working at that point mainly on the key stage three uh, materials. Um, so um, that will be... Uh, so then the next iteration that will come to you following that will have more detail on the key stage three. Uh, so that's the one area. It, it took... It's taken David and I... Uh, we spent a half day on key stage one. We spent a half day on key stage two. So we're hoping uh, that we're going to spend uh, a, a, a half day on key stage three on Wednesday. But I have scheduled all of Monday to uh, sort of work on the feedback that I've been receiving in the last few days from the SACRAs that have met. So, Lizzie, this might be a good moment to share the uh, the sort of um, time scale, the time frame, the process that we're working on, and then I will explain uh, where we're where we're going. Yep, can so, you see that? Uh, I can certainly see it. So, I'm guessing everybody else can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, we've got two big ticks by some of it because. Uh, we have done it. We did a provisional draft, which went to all of you and all of the hub in or the autumn. Uh, we received feedback and a second draft. I mean, it actually went through some other versions. Um, 
but a draft uh, came to uh, the the hub in twenty four in January twenty this year and was then sent out to everybody. Uh, the revised proposal is what we're in effect talking about today. Um, if if ba people are basically happy with the overall tenor of where we're going, then I will be convening some writing panels of teachers uh, during the summer term. I have earmarked six twilight sessions that I can do. So I will work with uh, EYFS, Key Stage 1, uh, Key Stage 2 and Key Stage 3, two sessions each. So we'll have about four hours. Uh, so it's not a huge amount of time, but hopefully that will be enough with all the feedback that we've had to uh, get some really concrete ideas in place and refine some of the language. I am hoping that the other two advisors, who are both uh, much more secondary specialist than I am, uh, my RE background is primary, uh, I am hoping that they are going to run at least a couple of uh, Twilight sessions with Key Stage 4 and 5. Uh, if I'm very lucky, I might persuade them to do Key Stage 3, in which case I can have three sessions with Key Stage one and three sessions with key stage two. The reason it's six is because that's all the twilights I've got left. <laughs> I just haven't got any more capacity to do it. Um, so hopefully that will produce a fresh draft that will come to everybody. No, of course it's not. That's what we're going to do today, Ron. Okay, um, thank you. That, that's, that's part of why you're going to go into groups in a couple of minutes. Uh, so, no, I mean, it won't be too late to add comments until such time as we've approved it. At the point that we say, right, that's it, that's done, it's off to uh, it's off to the LA for approval. At that point, unless the LA throw it back at us, and I'm sure Tracy won't let them do that. <laughs> uh, um, uh, uh, at that point, it would be too late to make serious changes. But if we keep the uh, the statutory content or the statutory document fairly light, then we can certainly add and tweak in the guidance, in the additional materials that will be the, the stage that comes after finalising this syllabus. So you can see we are hoping that this will be published spring next year. So if you know, depending on the feedback we get, and there are a couple of questions that I think we do need to pick up, particularly on the feedback I've had from um, uh, Reading and uh, West and Slough, is that you will see from the document that you've got that what we have at the moment is alternating Abrahamic and Dharmic traditions in key stage one and two and we have got judaism and hindu dharma in key stage one and islam and sikhi in key stage two west uh reading and slough are both very keen to switch that around and have islam in key stage one and judaism in key stage two Windsor and Maidenhead did not want to switch it round. So I think my, my hub meeting on Monday is going to be interesting because we have, we have to make a decision. I think we could offer it to be open, but if we offer that to be open where we have infant schools, they could choose to do Judaism and Christianity and Hindu Dharma in Key Stage 1. And then the junior school could choose to do Judaism and Hindu Dharma in Lower Key Stage 2. And then the children would not have got the breadth. And that's why I am anxious 
to tie the religions to a, a particular phase. It doesn't have to be that it's year one Judaism and year two Hindu. It could be the other way around. But that that's that's where that's why I put it the way I did. That's why that's where we've gone so far. So what what I'd like you to do and um Anna, you're going to have to talk to yourself. So I guess um, it might be sensible, Vicky, or um, Lizzie. There, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. But Lizzie, if you can probably put me into the group C, so at least uh, I can talk to Anna from the school's point of view. Also, um, Claire, Claire will join that group as well when she comes. Yeah, yeah. But because Just... she's not here at the moment. Um, just yeah. to say they're not strictly done by groups i think me and vicky um discussed this yesterday which rooms people were in just just to mix things up a little bit but oh, I okay. they, are more, they are more or less lizzie it's just group one we split up group a because it's so big um so the, the the rationale behind it is we've put in group a we've put um the the, the sort of christian denomination representatives together with alan um our humanist representative um, we'd like you to focus on those two parts of the syllabus, please. Um, Ron, that's your opportunity to feed back. Um, if you if you want to put things in writing, you need to send it to Lizzie and Anne. Either what, either way, it'll get to Anne if you send it to Lizzie. Um, there will be some uh, recording of the feedback by Lizzie, but if, if that you want it in more detail, then you need to send it in writing, I think, is, is what we would say. You'd agree with that, Anne, when you have to see Absolutely, see yeah. absolutely. And, and then pre pre will... preferably on a separate um, document. Word document so that I can save it and keep referring to it um, well, as I well, as I make changes. Yes, so so I will lead the um, the other part of Group A, which will be Dilip, um, Seb Day. Um, is Raj here? No. Uh, yes, she's just joined. Good. Hello, Raj. And Welcome. So Raj and Ossie, presumably. And Ossie. So I will, I will yeah. lead that group. Um, and then I think it was going to be Group B. Do we have many people in Group B? We've got two we've people. Got we, okay. We've got Jill and Dalapu. So Adalapu. So then, I was going then... to put you in that group. Well, I was going to go in that group, mm -hmm. but I think um, rather than Anna sitting there on her own, it makes more sense for me to join Anna. Okay, so Anna, and then when Claire joins us, we'll join your your group as well. Yeah, uh, and then uh, do we? Because presumably, to... Joe Joe as Catholic rep is in the uh the one of the parts of Group A. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Perfect. And and the other thing is, do we have sufficient counselors to make a group? We have two. Trace, we have Tracy, two. Yeah, Tracy, we have got Ryan and that? Ryan and Tricia. Yeah. So Tracy yeah, and well. send Tracy with the with the LA. Thank you. That's smashing. So I suggest ten minutes. Um. Lizzie, just because we're we're quite pushed for time, is that okay? You're all happy. You know what you're doing. Yep. So yeah. yep. can I can I ask a question, please? Of course you can. Please, Ossie. Um, was there any reason, any rationale given by people that they wanted things in particular year groups? Because if we set things in a particular year group, does that mean that we have to adjust what the studying? if we've been talking about it being in a different year group? Um, well, I mean, yes, a new, a new syllabus inevitably entails some changes to what's currently going on. Yeah. No, so, sorry, I, I wasn't clear in my question. You said that Maidenhead wanted one change, Reading wanted another change, that the Judaism, for example, will be studied in Key Stage 1. Oh, no, Judaism will be studied in Key Stage 2. Yeah. So well, if it's we, going to, we, did we, they have any particular reason why they wanted that? They they were concerned because in uh, Slough and Reading there are large numbers of Muslim pupils and they wanted them to see themselves represented as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. So if we decided, OK, we've been writing this syllabus in this way, but now it's not going to be started, this particular region and studied in Key Stage 1, but in Key Stage 2, do we have to rethink what is written in that syllabus? Fortunately, I don't think so. Because the way it was written, um, the topics, the questions 
on Judaism in Key Stage 1 and Islam on, in Lower Key Stage 2 were picking up similar themes. We may need to add or reduce the content a bit but that mm. would be that would that would be the only tweak needed i think so right. it's not it's not going to present a major problem to the right. syllabus writing process right i follow okay is that all right yes. Lucy? yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Right. anybody yeah. else got any questions they yeah. want yeah. to quick, ask quick one for Anne. You, you know you said you'd like uh, the comments written up I, I, are you okay if we use track changes i really would rather you didn't um because if everybody uses track changes, I've got identical looking documents uh, with different track changes all over it. I'd be much happier with it on a separate Word document than I can read and uh, make those alterations. Does that make sense? You could cut and paste the Hindu bit out onto the Word document to then write the, the changes on it. That would just be much easier for me because okay. otherwise I've got 85 different documents with track, track changes on them and mm. it's really it's it's much easier to work through a a word document adding stuff to my main page than than to try yeah. and cross I, I, think, I think you've made that you've made that really clear before as well and we need to make it as easy as possible for you it's really that's what you want on a word document so that's good yeah. any yeah. any further questions before we move into our groups yeah so what you're doing is you're looking at the content that focuses on your faith tradition where mm -hmm. possible and the generic and the general questions and the overall shape of what we've got at the moment and deciding, is this going to be fit for purpose? Yeah, thank you. OK. Cool. OK, I'll open the breakout rooms and call you back in 10 minutes time. Thank you. Thank you, Lizzie.
Welcome back. And do you want to take um, feedback or do you want me to lead on that? I, it would be helpful if you lead on that, Vicky, then I can make notes. If I'm leading, I can't make notes. Lizzie, you're making notes too. I am, yes. Thank you. Good. So I thought that should cover it. So um, Ron's group, I just say Ron because you happen to be top of my list. Um, do you have somebody who I could describe that could feed back for us? Ron? No. <laughs> we, I don't think we chose a scribe. But you can um, summarise for us, Ron. Uh, well, I, I, I raised something that I, I wanted to kind of raise gently in that I was a little bit anxious about what I perceived as a slightly different tone in the comments in the humanist section. They were more kind of declarative rather than exploratory. Um, and I wasn't kind of sh quite sure that that was appropriate. That didn't seem to be the same tenor as the others. So we we kind of discussed that a little bit. And I, I, I'm I've already in contact with Alan, so I'm going to send him my comments. Um, and uh, then we'll maybe, I don't know, we'll see what happens after that anyway. And then there was another topic that was kind of raised about um, um, just how we perceive this uh, being applied in the classroom situation. Um, and that was good for me to hear. It's a long time since I was in the classroom situation. What was said about that? Was it felt that the concepts were accessible? Were they teachable? Yeah. Who, who was it ra who raised that? No one's going to own up. Uh, Kathy, you're muted. I think the lady who said that, I, I can't remember who it was. I think she left. Um, but oh. she was stating that as a teacher, she often hopes to introduce um, other faiths in comparison to, you know, she's teaching Christianity. She she would introduce, but the Muslims also do this and, and emphasise the... Um, those things that we have in common in the religions rather than the differences. Mm. So she wouldn't exclusively teach Judaism, but would introduce other points of view at the same time. Absolutely. That is that is good teaching, particularly if you've got members of that faith in front, you connect what you're teaching to the children in front of you. So, <laughs> yeah, but because what we need to produce is a core content for study that's the core content that doesn't mean that's the sum total of it so you know um how people deliver it will be up to them but that may go in the notes and the guidance and in what the teachers write when we work together but thank you i have made a note of all of that i think i think both alan and um kathy kind of commented too on on the fact that um with with the different um councils who are wanting to alter the pattern of of um the 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 kind of abrahamic faiths to want to call them um that um i think alan pointed out that that, that um that uh, in in some senses uh, islam is a reaction to christianity and maybe to judaism and i kind of pointed out that in a sense Christianity is kind of branded as a new covenant. So almost by implication, it is distinctive from and not in addition to the first of the Mosaic covenant. So a natural order, it would have seemed maybe to kind of study these, would have been Judaism, Christianity, Islam. Yeah. But um I, I you know, that just that was just an observation that was made. Anything else from your group? That was very helpful. Thank you. Has Alan, yeah, has, just, just has Ron represented you? Yes, sorry. Just I the thing that we mentioned, Ron and I were saying that it's nice to see that Christianity is being looked at in like a wide breadth, like to cover all denominations that like for us in particular as free church representatives, we don't necessarily have like the symbols and things like that. And that's been noted that there are differences amongst Christians. Yeah, I th that's quite a big deal in the syllabus, isn't it? And that... that that people should children should be introduced to diversity within a religion as well as between religions 
yeah within within all of them yeah it's quite a sophisticated skill i think to understand that okay moving on uh, to the group yes yeah, sorry ron i was just going to say I, I just commented that in my kind of particular end of the christian spectrum um we don't have liturgy uh, we don't keep christian festivals other than a cutting a knocking a nodding agreement with kind of christmas and easter um we don't have sacred objects we don't have a sacred building um, and that sounds as though it's a kind of a really impoverished version, but there's a different kind of vitality. And I, and I had raised this in an earlier comment on this thing that um, this spread of Christianity, and I'm 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 raising my voice um, as a as a free church rep that at, that the other end of this spectrum, um, we don't have any of these things that are kind of part and parcel of what, what seems to be the normal way of examining sacred buildings and sacred things and sacred days and sacred people and we don't have saints we don't have any of those things um, we have banners and other things yes <laughs> thank you ron um alan was any yeah well well first of all i i'm, I'm not objecting to ron's comment about uh, humanism i mean uh, i i do notice that for instance the christian says god as creator and beauty of creation um so it's not saying Christians believe God is the creator. So to that extent, I'm, I'm quite happy to look at an editing of, of what I say to, to, to make it more kind of note form like that. Uh, and the other thing is just to note that humanists have the same issue that the free churches have only a fortiori, since we don't even have priests or churches <laughs> or texts. <laughs> so so a lot of the There's stuff- There's a similarity about... between you. Yes, that's right. Oh, so, yes. But it, <laughs> okay, we're going to have to move on, I'm afraid. Because, thank you. Yes, yeah, thank yeah. you. Um, thank you, so, Alan. So thank you very much for that feedback. Uh, again, again, if I'm cutting you short, um, you know what you must do. You just need to write your comments in a Word document and send it to Anne, and that way your voice will be heard. So the group that I, I led, um, we had... Um, a, a, please contribute, my group, because you have a, a, you know, a lot to say. Sevde's gone, unfortunately. Sevde's already given her feedback, but one of the things which Sevde said um, as our Muslim representative was that she felt there should be a unit at some stage on um, different religious or, or different worldviews, uh, view, connection or relationship with science. And Ossie was very keen to see this supported as well, because I think the, the concern was that um, the science module appears to be linked to humanism, which then gives the impression that all, all worldviews are based upon something rather fluffy and ethereal, whereas actually most religions do and worldviews do have a real strong connection with science and evolution and have got views on that. And I think it was felt that it would be good to cover that, whether that goes into key stage three, I don't know. But um, the other comment that was made by Dilip was, um, and please Dilip, it, um, do come in if you want to, support me here and say anything more was that he was a bit concerned about the absence of a dharmic religion at key stage three and do you want to say anything about that at this stage no i just felt that those formative years and and, and to drop yeah. uh, a piece of work like that uh would be a mistake i think so um buddhism is a dharmic faith and we have buddhism in key stage three i i i was Kind of resenting Hinduism. Well, yeah, I, 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 I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it feels like the last if, what is it, two or three years of of the schooling. Uh, yeah, they'll, they'll not it's, see that. It's really, really difficult when in most schools there's an hour a week of religious studies, and what we are, what we're aiming at, what. Ofsted is looking for in a good curriculum is depth as well as breadth. And there is a huge challenge to balance on an hour a week breadth as well as depth. And I I take your point and um yeah, I mean we we can we can have a look at it. Uh when David yeah. and I meet, I will make a note and we will have a look at it and decide whether actually we can switch something round. Um, but yeah, every every choice to do something is by equal definition a choice not to do something. 
Um, no, I okay. understand. I understand the yeah. challenge you have. I, I just <laughs> want to make sure it, that is, yeah. you have it, representation. That's that's yeah. what I was after. Yeah, I mean... Uh, so, so was anybody else in my group that wanted to say anything? Raj, where have you gone? I keep losing... Yeah, I, I think I didn't have... There wasn't enough time, so I dropped. I didn't give you a chance to speak, so my apologies for that. Was there anything you wanted to say now? I think similarly, I, think I, was, I was looking through and scanning through. It feels... I have to compare earlier versions, but I also stick the sticky... Hello? Um, it's it's kind of it's limited, so it's covered okay. in. Okay, I'm on a Zoom years. call, so can so I read in, um, Sorry, could you no. mute yourself if you're not speaking, please? Thank you. Sorry, Raj, carry on. So with Sikhi, it's taught in early years, which is kind of I remember that's very service skimming, so that children are quite young, four and five years old. It's not covered in Key Stage One. It's not not covered in Key Stage Three. Uh, so my concern is so probably similar to what Dilip is saying as well that it's kind of uh, and especially at Key Stage Three, children not older. Yeah. Have, it's it's guess, not it, it's not in early years. It's in low. It's in key stage two. I think early years. It's kind of it's generic, but it's very quite minimal. So it's it's kind of yeah. In early in yeah. early years, yeah. it's generic, yeah. but the yeah. main focus on Siki is in is in key stage two. That's it. So uh, with an with one. an op with an option. Uh, so it's it's at the moment it's set in years either three or four as an independent study with the option then set for teachers in five and six to revisit either Hindu Dharma or Sikhi or both. So it could be covered uh, in year four and again in year six. Yeah, but I think I'm still going back to the fact that essentially children aren't introduced to it in key stage two. So the yes, early, they the, are the, introduced to it in key stage two. But not in key stage one. No, not, not in key stage three. one, well, because yeah. on key stage one, they've only got an hour a week. And, yeah, I mean, I yeah. said that, but I think, yeah. it's, it's, I mean, I think Bracknell is probably, there's a local com com community of a you know, kind of population of Sikhs as well. In areas where there are Sikhs, I think it's it's kind of it's useful, especially if you have somebody who's a McDuddy and has, wears a turban, but children understand why they have that at an age yeah. where they're understanding um, yeah. of why there are differences. So that's my coming from that perspective for yeah. not children to kind of, and, and, and it's completely off topic, but bullying does happen with children look different because they wear turbans or uh, sort of their heads just, are covered. So yeah, I, just to, to reference, the current syllabus doesn't have Seeky and Key Stage it, it, 1. Uh, yeah, the yeah. previous syllabus didn't have Seeky and Key Stage 1. The previous to previous syllabus didn't have Seeky and Key Stage 1. In fact, it only had Seeky in Upper Key Stage 2. Okay. I, so I know that. We're, yeah, I we're, know that. we're, you know, we are trying to 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 bring it to bring it in and by including it in EYFS where it hasn't been before teachers can certainly and we can encourage teachers to make the links back um maybe we can hear from from Anna yes, who, can we hear, as, yes, a, can as a teacher Anna. can we hear um, Anna, please because I do, I do yeah. take everybody, that, yeah. and I know yeah. everybody wants their faith to yeah. be that's what we're here to, to yeah that's what we're here for okay let's but, let's yeah. move on let's move on from that Anna what did you you had your hand up um, it was I put my hand up originally with the um, previous comment around Dharmic faith in key stage three. But as a teacher and Claire will probably be able to chip in on this because actually she's a secondary school RE teacher. So she's probably in a better position than me to comment. But my understanding would be actually, as was referenced earlier, that you would hope to tie in previous learning and Ofsted certainly pushed that in terms of progression of understanding and skills within any subject and we've got to remember that RE here we're looking at it as an educational subject as opposed to as we all see it as a, a very important representation of, 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 of faith um, and learning about faith within our community and our culture um, but as a subject, it should be cyclical. It should revisit. I mean, yes, it might be touched on in early years, Rajip, but it would then hopefully be touched on when you look at other other faith faiths when it's being taught. And when you get to key stage three and four, I, I mean, I know from my children being in key stage three and four that they are pulling from all faiths on big questions and they're looking at things in a much more um, broad way so one would hope a good RE teacher would definitely be refer referring to what they knew or learnt in the syllabus in key stage one and two to inform that that knowledge better so if that I don't know if that helps or puts anyone's minds at rest about representation because I, I, I do think it does then entwine all the way through it or it should. Uh, and so Joe jo is just put Joe's put something in the feed as well, which is worth you all looking at. Thank you, Joe. 
Useful to hear from the teachers here. Let's just hear from any any other moving on to that group. Could we just do, listen hear any more comments from from the teachers? Um, Claire, anything you wanted to say? You're muted at the moment. Um, I just think Anna's really hit the nail on the head that, especially in the way that you know we we re we suggest these topics in you know the key stages, but some may do that thematically throughout the key stages and may say, "Remember when we did this and when we did that," and so um, each teacher has the freedom to do that thematically. And also, um, with with my head of department hat on here. Anne has pointed out that it's an hour a week. I get an hour a fortnight. Um, and like that's a own issue, but that that's where we're at. And you all know how passionate I am about the subject and you know you all know how much I fight it. And so if even I'm down to an hour a fortnight, it it really shows you what life is like out there. And it, you know, Ofsted have really put that in their most recent you know, their annual review. Um, and so, yeah, like we, we are working it. It's not, and you know, it's not forgotten about if it's taught once. And the, the spiral curriculum is a big thing at the minute. Um, so it's, it's saying that you don't teach something in isolation. You don't just leave it once. That actually it is important to link everything together and, and to interleave topics. And we would do that with FAPES. Thank you. And is, was there something you wanted to say? Just put something up on screen. Who? Anne? Me, Anna or Anne? Sorry. Who's just put uh, this yeah, on the screen? I've put that on the screen. Just to point out that in Key Stage 3, what we have also put in at the moment, which needs work because you'll see it's really um, broad, but is actually we've put in four ethical and philosophical questions that we have said must include Christianity, but can bring in a range of religious traditions too. So that might be a place where at Key Stage 3, people would revisit whatever religion they fancied. So, sorry, I will take that away again, but I just wanted to make that clear that actually we have listened to the feedback about having more religions. So we've got religion specific for Christianity, for uh, Islam, for Buddhism, and then we've gone with some uh, ethical and philosophical questions. Thank you. I'm just aware that I'm going to let Anna come back because of the importance of having the educational view, but then we must, we've only got a few more minutes before we move on to our other Sacre meeting. So, um, and I wanted to give um, Tracy's group time to come back and also um the CV group as well. But Anna, quickly, please, if you could make your yeah, point. Yeah, I will. I'll be really quick. But actually, I think it ties together the original conversation around whether um, it should, um, uh, the differences for the Reading and Slough groups saying that they wanted a different order of teaching in Key Stage 1 to Key Stage 2. And just referring back to Rajdeep's very um, astute point around um cultural understanding within communities particularly where maybe representation is is different in terms of different faiths and i think the idea that what she was sharing about bullying was really important but i think it's also important to ref reference that schools would address that in lots of different ways whether it be in making sure you're representative in in assemblies on a daily basis even in a c of e school or whether you are looking in like in early years it wouldn't just you know because it's a very pan um, curriculum in early years, you would be looking at in terms of, I don't know, um, what my family looks like and um, people that help us or important people in our communities. So you would then hopefully address all those issues around how different people look and dress and, and do those things in different ways. And I, and I think that references what Anne said at the beginning in support of her thoughts. There's a timeline that's necessary, I think, in teaching about religion as opposed to the, our cultural understanding as a community and um, religious understanding as a community that I, I personally would say that you need to approach um, Judaism prior to both Christianity 
and Islam in, in, in schools, just like you would in history, look at that timeline. I think there's a, there's a context there and a continuity that needs to be there to make sense of the learning as it moves through from early years, key stage one, key stage two, which would be my point of view, but I hope, yeah, anyway, I'm going to stop now. That's very helpful. Thank you. Um, just C of E group, um, you were quite s s small. Talapa, was there anything you wanted to say? You're muted at the moment. I think Jill was going to speak for us. Jill. Okay, Jill. Well, I think we both thought that the progression from key stage one to key stage well two to, was well developed. Um, uh, um, basically, um, although Christianity is... Uh, I taught in the church school for over 30 years. I've been retired now. So we could teach in a, in a way without any apology. But I think the way that they've developed it is quite simple and um, works through well with uh, the Jesus baptism, the life of Christ, the parables. Um, and I could see that could all be taught in quite a simple way. Um and later it would link up with other religions in how we treat people and kindness. And uh, Are you happy with that? Yes, yes. I was worried initially because for Key Stage 1, there was nothing, no mention of the Holy Spirit. But we saw it was there in Key Stage 2. So we could see the progressive development, you know, and as the children grow older, they can take in more complex uh, um, charms and they can understand them better. So again, from what every other person has said, there, there is need to make it come alive by letting children who are from other religion find something they can connect with even while you are teaching a particular religion. And I do hope that will be in the notes for the teachers who are delivering this. So they do know uh, the fact that a child is not a Christian should not stop them from active participation in the learning because they can't connect unless they can connect with what we are putting before them it would be it would not have any meaning so for it to be meaningful that connection has to be made by the teacher and it can only be made by the teacher but if something is in the notes for the teachers that will work that will help thank you thank you very much um so the last group then, last but not least, Tracy, you were you were with um Ryan has had to go, I think. Did I have a note to say somebody somebody had to go? Ryan is still here at the oh, moment, as is yeah. Tricia. And I would I would suggest it would be being that they are counsellors and I'm an LA officer, I'm slightly di slightly different. Okay, so um, we, do they want to all, do they do you either want to feed back on what you were saying? Both of you are muted at the moment. Yeah, I, I, um, I'd say a few words, but I, I feel somewhat inadequate to to comment, except that, um, it seems to me that all the religions are covered, but it, I don't know about the detail of it, and and it needs this discussion to, um, so everybody can. And I make sure that the important parts of their religions are represented. And um, I'm sure that there are ways of covering more religions if if you attack from a different angle, like, for instance, what, what people wear or um, which day they worship or uh, that sort of thing, um, that... You know, we don't have to leave every leave somebody out for a whole year. Um, there are ways to include 
all the different um, main religions, I believe. So uh, that that's the only thing I would say. But you you are the learned people and, and know what ought to be in there. So I'm listening with intent. <laughs> Thank you, Trisha. Thank you. Vicky, um, can I just say on behalf of Ryan, Ryan just wanted to also say, I've just got it in my notes, he would yeah. just like to be, you know, the amount of work that's gone in that Elizabeth so far, he'd most like to commend on that um, because, Absolutely. you know, he recognises yeah. how hard it is um, to bring all of this together and the team that has worked, including the co-production that's happened across not only here in Sacre's, across the hubs, but also with the schools as well. Here, here been a lot of work <laughs> and Anna's been the one that's conducted it all so thank you Anne um was there any we've got to six o'clock and I did say that this part of the meeting would finish at that point was there anything just wrapping it up and was there anything else that you wanted to say before we move on to uh, just two? that that that's all really helpful feedback and uh we will do our we will do our best to incorporate um thoughts and ideas where we can uh but just to say that the general thinking within the re world is that in any one year group children should have christianity plus one other religion particularly in the early years and uh so until the end of lower key stage two and then from upper key stage two so years five and six which is why we have got put the choice and slightly more thematic way of looking at the Abrahamic religions and a slightly more thematic way of looking at the Dharmic religions in order to do exactly what what you've been you've been saying but the thinking is that if we try to do thematic stuff too early for children that actually if they haven't got the foundations and of course many of our children are coming into school with no knowledge of even what we mean by the word god let alone religion therefore we we really have to make sure that it's clear what we're talking about and so that that's the that's the rationale behind what we've what we've got um but certainly we can have a think and look at the key stage three materials and if there is anything in the representation of your tradition bearing in mind the diversity within traditions you know the diversity within hindu dharma the diversity within sikhi and within the church of england let alone the rest of the christian community please let us know we cannot promise to include everything um so uh you know angela david and i are quite experienced and so we will try to draw out what we think is going to work best with the teachers and then if there is agreement that that is how we proceed that this is basically okay needs tweaking absolutely but if this is basically okay then i can uh after the hub meeting next monday i can start to convene the writing panels so um i don't i don't think it's a vote as such but could i just see if people think that we are broadly on the right lines and that there's nothing that makes anybody go oh good grief this is dreadful throw it away because if there is now is the time to speak so I think that looks like you've got a yeah a okay that's and good to remind people to if you feel that you haven't had a chance to speak fully <laughs> um please do uh email Anne there are some uh, there is a conversation that's gone on in the chat um I, I don't know whether it's there's anything in there, Anne or Lizzie, that you just want to take a note of before we lose the meeting, because when it goes when it goes with the meeting. So, oh, do we have a separate meeting for the next one? Um, no, 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 okay. no. It's the same meeting. Right. Yeah. All I put in the chat was that there are the options, and a lot of primary schools do this. Is actually they have cultural or drop down days where they do additional RE. 
And often that is the point at which they will introduce a completely different faith that's not on the curriculum, that's not on the timetable. So, uh, you know, we could we could recommend that schools consider doing one RE day a year and pick up a different faith. I've seen some schools that sort of get each year group to look at a different faith on the drop down day and they take a theme. But that is generally in addition to the RE. So it's just a possibility. So something else to think about. No, it's very helpful. And thank you all as well for your contribution. Yeah, thank so you. Going... And do send me stuff in writing. Yeah, we're I'm going to very happy now. to receive it. Thank yeah. you. We're going to move on now to the um, the next part of the meeting. Which okay, is I did, have, I did my ha have my hand up. So if, if I could, yes. just, I think I'm, I'm, I, hope, I appreciate the feedback. I didn't from... see it. My apologies. Yes, Raj. So I did hear the feedback from Anne, Anna and Claire as well. So I'll write back to you. But I think just the one thing I want to pick up is that we're on a public forum. I think what disheartened me is I think and you know to pick up on the fact when say we're going I think we, you went back three cycles of the uh, RE curriculum saying it wasn't done before I think we're in a different climate we have different community kind of uh, kind of makeup as well just because it hasn't been done before doesn't doesn't mean that should we shouldn't cover more of Sikhi or any other religion that people are putting forward as well uh, but I, I know we're kind of limited on time but I will come back to you but I think that's what my responsibility is to be if I don't raise yeah. my concerns. I'm not doing my. I'm not. There's no. Yeah, purpose no. Purpose absolutely. Purpose. Absolutely. And, also, and, and um, if I feel your feedback is is just rebutting me, again, I have a duty to come back to you as saying actually there's yeah. no point in me being here if you're just going to ignore what I say. And I'm I'm representing a different kind of comment as well, so I want, I'm just going to voice that. But I yeah. will write to yeah. you uh, to you. And I'm ask I'm, you I'm definitely not ignoring Super. what you say. No, you're not. I know you're not. But I'm just saying. I'm really, we're really trying to yeah. increase the amount of. I mean, unt until. Until the previous iteration, no Islam was taught in Key Stage 1 or 2 in Bratnell schools. So we we do listen to feedback and we have incorporated feedback. But obviously, bringing Islam in has reduced the amount of time that we have for some of the other religions. So we are we are doing a balancing act of trying to ensure that there is an opportunity for children to learn about the range of world religions. And Sikhi is important, which is why it has a whole uh, year group, a whole set of questions uh, linked to itself. If, you, if, if I could have some feedback on the content of that, that would be really helpful. No, I, I'll provide that. Yeah, because I, I haven't had any feedback from anybody uh any of the other seat groups yet so yeah, um, yeah. That, I know that, point is so that is probably what's making it also look like there's not that much there because the con we, the content is there i think you were on communication for you but again yeah. separate from email yeah. check so there. that would be it's no that would be really yeah. helpful to have have Definitely that feedback and we that. and we will try um i mean the question i suppose we could say in uh, upper key stage two that actually we don't give the option to bring in uh, uh, Buddhism that we say no in upper key stage two teachers can revisit either Hindu or and or Sikhi and that we actually take the Buddhism back out of key stage three uh, key stage two rather and say you will do you you have to do one one or both of those again that Can is just another ask, option so dilip Go. dilip you want to speak very very quick one and, and that's for and please whatever decision you make to exclude anything that's been stated at least let us know why oh absolutely and anything that will be excluded will be i shall tell you what the rationale will be it will be simply that there will not be enough time for teachers to deliver it. If we put too much statutory content in, what will happen is that teachers will be skimming the surface and children will not get depth. Okay, we need to call this meeting to a close now. So we will do our we will do our best yeah. to get to get I'm as sure much in. And I'm sure you, you know, will. we we have ummed and ahed and moved it all around uh, again and again. Um, you know, yeah, I mean. What, what do we do? You have a very difficult task. In my experience, it, though, to reassure um, Raj and Dilip, and I don't know, what, I know Claire's got difficulties with this because you only get an hour every two weeks, but in my experience where schools do have an hour a week, 
then all the religions are covered in, in an appropriate way at key stage yeah. three. Because remember, you've got three years, year yeah, seven, eight absolutely. and nine. So, you know, I think I think uh, curriculum leaders are very keen to make sure that all worldview, yeah. the key six are, are, and humanism are taught um, fairly and, and, and an interesting and uh, an yeah. energizing way as well. Because, yeah. I mean, there's so much about Sikhism, for example, it's really colorful. It's a really lovely subject to teach. I've really yeah. enjoyed teaching yeah. it in the past. So I'm not trying to sort of just um, patronise at all. Please don't think yeah. I am. But just to say, I think if a school has got the time on the curriculum, then they, they will they will do it. Yeah. And, and that it's is worthwhile. why... We're, yeah, and that's why we're trying to keep the core content, so the stuff in bold, to uh, a relatively small amount so that teachers can do other things. Let's move um, on. We need to yeah. stop then. Okay. We'll, we'll do the yeah. guidance and it will work. I so, hope. Thank you very much. So moving now on to the second part of the, the, the meeting, um, we will finish at seven. Um, so there were the minutes of the previous meeting. Was, are we all happy, to, those of us who are present, are we all happy to approve those? There were a couple of matters arising, but are you happy to approve them? Could you put your hands up if you are? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, there was a couple of matters arising. Um, the first one was the um, re the, dis uh, the, the yes, Joe. Joe, I can't hear you. I think she's giving you a thumbs oh, up. She's giving me a thumbs up. Okay. Um, the first one was that in the previous minutes we talked about inviting the chaplain of the um, of Ranala School. To meet with us, uh, and that promoted a prompted a conversation with um, Anne actually about whether we might um, meet in person in July, um, and whether we could ask if there would be any schools be lovely to meet in the school, whether there be any schools that would be willing to host us. Um, ah, Claire, um, I've got it down somewhere that we were meeting at Birch Hill Primary. I don't know why. Um, if that's not the case, I'm happy to host at Garth. We're pretty central. I don't know where the, that came Birch, from. The Birch Hill comes from the network meeting. The RE network meeting was scheduled for Birch Hill. Thank you. See, so, I do listen. It just all blends <laughs> into what. <one. laughs> it sounds like you've been trying to manage childcare as well as attending this meeting. So thank you. It's really lovely to see you. I should have really welcomed you earlier when you popped up. Um uh, so is that an agreed thing that we would like to meet in person next time and Claire has very kindly offered Garth so it gives us a chance to see each other in person are you happy to would you just show indicate by waving at me whether that's something you'd like to do yeah yes that's some fine people aren't voting <laughs> I know it's easier online because I'm away like in July so right. if it will be both. Then I can join from wherever in the world I am. Uh, I don't think we're going to do both. Lizzie, are we? Lizzie? It's easy. Um, not, only, not easily unless Claire has some wild suggestion what Garth has technologically wise, but um, not easily, I'm afraid. I think that might not be possible. We do have to make sure the meeting is um, advertised as being at Garth so that members of the public can join should they so wish. I think that was what you said to me yesterday, Lizzie. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. It has to be in a publicly accessible building. Um, Ossie's saying she might find it difficult to get there from work. Yes, I, I do appreciate it's not as easy as being on Zoom. Yes, we, have, we have done a hybrid with West Barts where we had a laptop and some people met at um, Newbury and then some people were online. So and if people feel really, really passionately about still attending but can't attend in person, um, I'm sure we can set a laptop up or something. If Lizzie, that's fine to... If Lizzie and I discuss it about working out the logistics, yeah. but I'm sure we can come up with a plan to make hybrid. Thank you. Well, shall I leave that with you? And uh, we agreed that we'd like to invite Adrian to come and speak as a guest at that meeting. It won't be for very long, so we've got other business to do as well. Yeah, and saying many sacres do hybrid. Good. So I'll leave you to to sort that out. And Lizzie, there's another matters arising, which I've lost my notes. Can you remember what it was? 
Um, not off the top of my head. Let me have a little quick look. Um, I think they've gone into the recycling, my notes. Oh, it was the annual report. Oh, yes. You were going to say about been, the annual report. Has that been sub Thank you, Lizzie. Has that been submitted, Anne? I know that I wrote my bit. Uh, no, it hasn't because I think Tracy has got the exam results and I uh, is going to talk people through the exam results and I uh, therefore can then add them and submit it. So we actually submit a, a full re uh, a full report. Um, okay. That's fine. So it's ongoing. It is. It is ongoing. I right. I, I have it. Uh, I haven't made any substantial changes, so it was basically ready apart from results. So that will that'll go out as soon as it can. Thank you. Um, membership update, Lizzie. Yeah, just for speed, I was going to do a full update, but to be honest, it's the only thing to note is what I said earlier. So Sevde um, is a pending member of SACRE, um, pending the executive member's sign off. Um, so she fills the Islamic vacancy. I think we have vacancies in uh a Catholic vacancy and a Buddhist vacancy and a local authority vacancy. I think that's it. Uh, and a C of E vacancy because we lost Carol Dunk. Uh, yes, you and, are right. And we haven't seen David Clues for a very long time. He sent his apologies today. We didn't actually do apologies at the top. Okay. Um, yeah, I can send those two separately if you want. Uh, that would be helpful. My, my apologies for missing that out <laughs> um, it'll be in the do you want to quickly do the apologies yeah I can just tell you so we've had apologies from Father David Clues, uh, Tim Griffith Ruth Jackson, Councillor Barnard and Councillor Ijaz thank you um, so I'm going to move on now to the artefacts uh, work and plan um, so th thank you Tricia bye now Just, um, I think that makes us not any longer corrupt if okay. Tricia nope we are no longer, no, if Trisha goes, we're no longer Cora. Can we continue in we advisory capacity? We can continue capacity? as, we can continue in an advisory capacity, yeah. yeah. But, so it's good that we, yeah, we did the Sacre bit first. You mean the, 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 the yes, ASC bit first. Sorry, I've done, I've done three, I've done four Sacre meetings in a fortnight. So my brain is beginning to melt. You're doing very well, Anne. Well, I presume we can get approval for what we're going to do with the Sacre artefacts, despite not being core, can we? I mean, this is the most important bit of this meeting, to be honest. Do you want to do, you want to do that while I'm still here? Yes, please, Tricia. <laughs> if so, you could, if you could give us ten minutes, Trish, that would be brilliant. I'll be as quick as I possibly can. So basically, the you've read the the email, Tricia, because I don't know because you've replied to me. So just um, these. Lizzie, could you quickly show the Sacre artefacts? So these are the display cabinets. They are very attractive. These are the things that um, will be going to the library. I can now say that the library have uh, agreed to take them. So um, there are six in all, uh, and they are there's one for each worldview. Um, and they're very beautiful, and they're they're going to I think be a real. Um, asset to the to the library so what we need your permission for um and i'll do this quickly just because this is the the most uh, significant bit and that is we need your permission to because these artifacts belong to sacre uh, thanks lizzie we need you to your agreement that they can be moved to the library i think that's that's it isn't it um lizzie yeah i mean it's not a uh... It's not a formal sign off as in that it's not a report for SACRE to take a decision on, but it is good to get an indication from every group that they're happy for this to go ahead. So do you have any questions about that? I did put it in the email, so um, hopefully it gave you time to think about it. For all it's worth, I'm for it. Good. I think it's a really good use of the Sacre artefacts. It means that they come out of the Open Learning Centre where they've been hidden away. No one's looked at them and they're now going to be in, you know, in the public domain. And it, uh, I think, Claire, you're quite keen to work with a team of anybody who wants to work with you on a piece of work which um, children and families can access when they go into the library. So, you know, I think it's a great opportunity for us to do a joint project with the local library um, and... 
The, the problem of security is still an issue. I mean, if somebody goes at the cabinets with, as you've seen, they're quite flimsy. Someone goes at the cabinets with a pickaxe, they're going to be able to get into them. But the, um, we are going to be able to secure them so that just the casual vandal or person who is up to no good won't actually be able to get in and, and harm the artefacts. And if you're happy with that arrangement, then um, we can move forward with it. Bracknell Council have very kindly given us the money to make it possible to pay for the removals and um, for the locking devices to be put on the on the artefacts. So if you're happy to support it, then that's what we'll do. We'll move forward with that. Could you indicate, please, whether you're happy with that? Sure. Anybody not happy? You're not happy, Jill? Yeah, I am happy, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alan, you're not happy. I can't hear you. You're mute. It's not really for me to say, but uh, I was happy. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> I want, I want you to be happy. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I, I, and your hand's still up. Did you want yeah, to say something? Yeah, I, I just wanted to say what we are hoping to do, and this will be an adjunct to the syllabus, so this will be another place where additional uh, traditions and uh, additional religions can be taught, is to actually work with teachers to create some faith trails that will link with some of the syllabus questions, but will be given opportunity. And that will be just a Bracknell Forest thing. That won't be part of the syllabus, but it will be an adjunct to the syllabus is to create some faith trails with the teachers. And Tracy and I have talked about doing this in the autumn term network, I think, because we won't be able to do it in the summer term network because we won't be ready, I don't expect. Um, but to actually produce, uh, you know, to to go to look at the artifacts and get teachers to work out uh, some questions and some activities and some things that could be used by schools as well, linking to those activities. And then, of course, there, there'll be stuff on the boxes that we'll work on later. Yes. I just want to say, Tricia, where's she gone? She gone? Yeah. No, she said. Thank you. Thank you for staying. Um, that's basically it. Um, so thank you for making making sure we were quiet for that decision um just the the other bit that Anne's just mentioned there is and this is what we're doing on saturday um i don't think it was very clear from my email perhaps but there are two pieces of work the first is the cabinets and that was the thing that was concerning us most because the open learning center wanted us to move them as quickly as possible by the first of april if possible the second piece of work actually the open learning center are very keen to work with us and that's something that um some of us are going to be doing on Saturday, which is sorting through the remaining artifacts, which are in boxes. Now, these are to go on loan to schools. Um, and at the moment, they're in a bit of a mess. So um, Bracknell Council agreed that I can buy um, some plastic boxes, which means that they'll be safer and better protected and easier to carry. Um, so on Saturday, I think uh, Ossie, Sevde, Dilip, Raj, have I missed anybody out? And then okay. we've got a Buddhist coming from Windsor Abby. and Maidenhead. I mean, yes, that's right. One of your friends is coming from Windsor and Maidenhead. Uh, Kathy, did you say you were coming? Uh, yes, I said I possibly. I don't think we've got any behind um, artifacts in the in there at all. But I'm happy to help sort things out. Fine. So thank you. So uh, and I know Tracy and Anne and myself will be there as well. So. Um, it should be a really good opportunity to to meet each other and to spend some time sorting out the artefacts um, so that they're in a really good place so that they can be borrowed by local schools. And then the next job is to um, make schools aware that they exist in the newsletters. Um, so that's that's. Can you remind me when that. when that is? Nine thirty. Nine thirty to one thirty on Saturday at open, morning at the Open, at the open Learning, Learning Centre. Center. There's okay. good parking there. Yeah, there's good parking. Um, thank you very much for those who have offered to do that. Please don't feel you've got to stay the whole morning. Um, I mean, just pleased to have you there and, and your input would be really good. Anything else to say on that, Tracy? Um, I was just going to say, hopefully, we will also, if, if colleagues would like to be able to see the one, that, like the cabinets and, and the items that are in the cabinets, we also should have access to that room as well um, on the day, um, which I think would be really good. And and if you know, from from a perspective of um, insurance, I'm just the, the piece that I would also have to be um, concerned by is just making sure that um, if colleagues do get to look at the items that are in the the cabinets and give me an idea, 
not about uh, it, it's more about financial value of some of those items because at the moment they they are under our insurance but what they aren't identified as particular items and if there are particular items that are over a particular um, amount i need to be able to identify those back to um the team that deals with insurance within the la so i'll be really really pleased if colleagues do get to look at them and can give me some idea if they are um you know they have real financial wealth not in terms of our wealth to, as an item, as an artifact to ourselves, but the financial, um, if we had to replace them in any way, shape or form. Thank you. Anne? The other thing I think we could think about on Saturday is uh, actually from the boxes, which artifacts should be in the boxes and which artifacts should be in the cabinets. So yeah. actually uh, looking at the cabinets as well would be really useful. So I've had pictures from Sue Carpenter from the Open Learning Centre, which I've just shown you to show yeah, how they used what, to be organised. What it used to be, yeah. And that will be really helpful. Yeah. Good, thank you. So unless anybody's got anything else they want to say on that subject, it's a really, really good, positive move forward. And when we look at the action plan in a minute, which we're, um, Claire will speak to, you'll notice that the whole priority is actually devoted to getting this sorted. So we are already well on the way with this, which is great. Um, so can we do the RE Network meeting feedback pretty prompt, pretty quickly, Anne? Very quickly. We had good attendance at the RE Network meeting. We were talking about how you assess the curriculum. So we were focusing very much on what, what a good curriculum looks like and how you know if your curriculum is working. Um, Teachers seemed really engaged. Our next RE Network meeting is in person at Birch Hill School, where we will be sharing uh, resources, artifacts, talking about standards in work, and hopefully looking at the draft syllabus to, to get some wider feedback. Thank you. And um, I think you're still on screen doing the National Content Standard Reporting. That oh. was awesome. That was a big document you sent us. Yes, through. yes. Um, <laughs> the national con. Fortunately, all the bits at the back of it yeah. are are just references to previous um, uh, reports, and actually, in some ways, that is the most useful bit of the document because what that sets out, and you'll see. Uh, you know, you'll you'll see why we've been thinking about the syllabus in the way that we have been thinking about if you read all of that background information, because what we are trying to do is to use the learning from all of those reports to inform the way we build the syllabus. The National Content Standard is currently a totally non-statutory document that aims to achieve a standard for the content it's not setting out standard it doesn't aim to it's not setting out content it's not telling us what to teach but it is aiming to set out a standard so that a religious education syllabus that did not look at uh influence and power so in in individuals and communities that did not look at continuity and change, that did not include uh, the lived and diverse reality uh, and all of those other statements, A to K, I think it is. If the syllabus did not contain those, then it wouldn't be a good syllabus. Um, so it is aimed at syllabus writers. Um, to be honest, it's not as helpful as it might be um, and the examples of the sort of work are not as helpful as they might be you know for EYFS children ch pupils might look at photographs and look for similarities and differences well yes I think that is pretty much one of the things that EYFS would be doing. It's not really setting out much of a standard. So this is the first draft of this document and it may well change and evolve. So there will be other versions of it. Um, if anybody has any feedback on it, uh, I'm very happy to pass it back. But we are we are referring to it in terms of 
trying to to ensure that some at least some of what we're setting out in our syllabus is in line with the general tenor of the content standard um and that is not proving easy no okay thank you I mean you, you did did well to summarize that very long document for us thank you very much for what you're doing Anne so um I've asked that Lizzie puts the action plan up for us um so that you can talk to it Claire is that okay for you so just to, as, as we're giving Lizzie time to do that, just to give you some background, the SACRE is expected to have um, a, a living working document we're working to, which we refer to every meeting to keep us on task, really, to make sure that we're doing what we should be doing. Um, and uh, Madeline Diver was responsible for the previous action plan. Um, that's now expired. And in fact, our priorities, I think, have changed since that plan. We've really got to start looking now at um, how we... Um, implement the syllabus in the future and also the artifacts and and also how we monitor and re within the borough so um i asked claire if she would um pull together something for us which could be a live document for us going forward and really this is an opportunity for you to talk uh, to, you know to discuss it um and uh, to say yes uh, happy to uh, support this as a document something that we can work with as a sacre going forward into the next next year so Claire, over to you. So I did try to keep this really simple um, because our biggest piece of work is going to be the syllabus review and that's where our efforts really need to be. Um, but also I didn't want to lose sight of all the other wonderful things that we do um, and, have and also are able to do. Um, and so I've kind of drawn together um, so looking at the work that Madeline did previously, discussions from SACRE meetings and then looking at other SACRE um, action plans have pulled this together. So our, our big first priority is the review. And so I've tried to break this down into a timeline almost, like in, in stepping stones of what we're going to do. So we're, we're having our syllabus review meetings. We um, we are also having our um, agreed syllabus council. Um, there is also an awful lot of work being done at the hub level as well. Um, and whenever Vicky and I are saying about Anne and Anne's work in it, we, we're really not even scratching the surface on how much Anne's doing with this. Um, she really is keeping us all in line and, and not just us in Bracknell Forest, but across the whole Pan Berkshire hub. Um, and so we're very fortunate to have that um and, and to have Anne um and so at the moment you know we we are looking for those expertise and, and looking at different people with their different viewpoints um so looking at that content making sure that content is suitable um and then as we move forward it'd be writing that up into a, a formal syllabus into that formal document that will be worked out um and then also we're not in isolation and we're very fortunate with that. And that's one of the good thing about being a SACRE is that there are plenty more around um, that we, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. And um, it, it did make me chuckle that we're borrowing a Buddhist, but, you know, we, we have that support network there that we, we can um, pull upon. Um, so I'm going to go through it all. And then if anybody has questions, if you go down. Um, so let's number two, please. While we've got a bit of a pause, I'm sorry I had to leave, as I said earlier, Vicky. No problem. Thank right. you, Dylan. Thank, see you. Thank, Thank you, Dylan. Yeah, see you on Saturday. Yeah, Cheers. bye. Bye. And, and, and that brings me perfectly, <laughs> same Saturday, um, brings me perfectly onto the artifacts. Um, so our first step is to sort through it, which the team are doing on Saturday, um, just to make sure are they all fit for purpose. And then, as Vicky said, what can be displayed and what can go into the boxes. Um, and then the delivery. And, and again, v Vicky has been quite modest about this, but the, the work to try and find movers who will do this and locksmiths and, and trying to track down budgets and things, um, it, moving them over to the library is a 
is probably the biggest part of this job. Everything else is quite simple compared to the, that. Um, and so I'm very, very grateful to Vicky for taking that. Um, Tracy, and... Tracy's been a big help too. She's kept me in line. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, yeah, you know, it's, it's brilliant. And, and uh, again, Sacro is a team and I, I very much love that. Um, and then as we said, we, there's going to be those RE trails and um, a, a branch off that will be um, creating activities for the library. So can we do a rainy day activity and highlight that there are these brilliant stuff to do at the library? Um, and, and also from a very personal perspective, my mother-in-law has Mabel on a, on a Friday and she would love something like this. She would love to go to the library and have activities that could just be picked up. Um, so thinking more of wider community as opposed to faith trails may possibly being more teacher. Um, and so creating these activities, using the network, using everybody basically to help with that and to make sure they are fit for purpose um, and then advertising them and advertising them appropriately. And then last one, please, uh, Lizzie. Um, and then this is something that um, really came from the passion of the last meeting of um, just ensuring we we are promoting that good religious education. And um, I mentioned it briefly a little um, earlier in the meeting that the, the Ofsted annual review was really damning on religion and, and RS but I was grateful for that because I could then wave it in my SLT space um, and so we we are in a position where we can support um, I'm I'm also leading on transition this year so I'm going to get into a lot of primary schools and make sure um, I'll be working with Tracy and Anne to make sure that all our contacts are up to date and to see who I can I can nab but also part of that is I'm I'm offering my RE ability to the primary schools as well um, as part of that link. But it's making sure those the network meetings are brilliant. They're really, really lovely. Um, I'm actually not head of RE at Garth at the moment and, and won't be for the next year because um, I've stepped up to another role. But she is very, very much looking forward to attending the network meetings for her confidence. Um sharing the best practice but also from us um going into schools going into seeing things what what are we seeing um i went to a primary school yesterday that shared their year six curriculum and it was art history drama but no mention of re and it um it, I, I i always word this wrong it was a faith school but that's not what they're called anymore um but you know you know what i mean um and then using our faith speakers. So Madeline did a lot of work on the interfaith forum and the interfaith network and, and making sure that that's still going ahead and getting people into schools. And, and we've done some of that, but making sure that is embedded. Um, and just, um, and it, this is something that Mad Madeline started was um, enable the digital sharing of collective worship of um how can we use the technology that's out there to share good practice and and something that we also really need to look at is collective worship and how it's being done or not being done and where we need to intervene so that's something that i'm I'm looking forward to us getting our teeth into i know some sacres have each rep has a couple of schools that they are linked to because they already have an in there um, and that's something we can look at um but yeah i thought these were our three priorities so if we if lizzie if you could stop sharing if anyone's got any questions concerns you're not very happy with anything speak now oh, um i wanted to be purposeful i didn't want to overburden us um, I did. I, I tried to keep it simple. I think you have, and it's very relevant to um, you know, it, it's practical. We can see we can see already things emerging from it. So I, I personally want to thank you very much for taking this on, Claire. I really appreciate it. Um, 
they're not easy things to do, these action plans. So you've done well on that one. If, if we're all happy, I mean, I know we're not quora, but in principle, are we happy to take this forward as our working document over the next few few meetings? Yeah. Good. Excellent. Right, Anne, back to, thank you, Claire. Back to you, Anne. NASA Cray Matters point nine. Oh yeah, sorry. I was I I was looking at um rather than screen sharing, I had the I I was looking at the 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 action plan, the development plan. So I've just had to scroll back up to see what the next item was. So yeah, uh NASACA. Um has anybody been on any NASACA training recently? Yes, Abby, you were on the session that I was on on Tuesday night. Yeah, I, actually, Ron, you were there as well, weren't you? I did the agreed syllabus conference, and I did one two weeks ago, which was about uh, death and loss, and that was really good. Yeah, and I have got all of your notes, but I haven't worked on the syllabus since you sent them to yeah, me. Yeah, cool. So yeah, yes. it was really interesting. The guy that led it was the um from the Guild of Undertakers, and he was really sensitive to how he dealt with it and how he went into schools and explained about it. It was a really interesting session. I just found it quite interesting, even um just applying it even to a death that we've just recently had in our own family. It, it was really helpful. Thank you, Abby. Ron. You're on mute, Ron. Ron? Ron you're on mute, mute, Ron. I, I've been to several of, of these um, uh, Zoom meetings, and, and they really are a, a kind of a treasure house as far as I'm concerned. I'm still sort of consciously trying to immerse myself into this whole foreign country that I stepped into two or three years ago. Um, and it really was very, very helpful. Um, I've I've kind of I've got a little list of the ones that I've been to, and I've got URLs so I can kind of go back to them, and kind of look at things again to refresh my mind because there's a lot of brand new stuff, as far as I'm concerned anyway. But I think that it's done very well, very helpful, reassuring. Thank you, Ron. Uh, so there is uh more NASA training coming up, uh in June. I'm not sure off the top of my head of the date. Um, but there is going to be a session for anybody who's new to SACRE. Uh, so a uh, session, I think it's something like the 26th of June. So you've joined your local SACRE. So it might be the kind of thing that's worth attending. Um, be uh, Even if you have been on SACRE for a while, because actually hearing what other SACRE's are doing and how yes. other SACRE's are running their... Yes agreed syllabus conferences and their monitoring of schools is fascinating. Tracy. Yeah, I was just in addition to that, because of the um, the membership that you buy into, um, obviously I recognise that sometimes we just can't get to these, th these sessions. And if you want to look at the slide decks that come from those sessions, we also get those as part of the, uh, the package that we buy into. So you're more than welcome to access them um, outside of the, um, obviously, the time that's allocated for them. Yeah. And the recordings are are available as well, usually, for most of them, not for all of them. Ron? I just wanted to comment that um, I, I'm pretty sure that once you have booked in for them, even if for any reason you can't get to them, you still have access to them. So yeah. you can go back to them again and again and again yeah. to the actual recording. And that's um, I found that helpful, particularly when you're leading, dealing with new stuff. You you can get the kind of the background idea of first time, right? like scanning a book. And then yeah. you can go back and kind of look at it in more detail. And and the differences between the different sacros and their interrelationships with the different local councils. I'm also finding fascinating how many different ways there are of doing all this. Yeah. Yeah, there are it it's a it is a vastly complex uh situation and working with I mean I only work with four different sacres and the way that each of those sacres operates is so different. Mm -hmm. Um and and you know, and that's within a relatively small area. So uh and Claire will know the same from having been on uh, a, a different sacre. Uh, the NASACA website is also really useful and uh, 
as part of NASACA exec, one of the one of the other things I have been doing is working with a colleague from NASACA, and we have uh, moved a lot of the stuff around on the website, so it is much easier to find things. Um, you should all have a login for it. So, Lizzie, maybe you could recirculate the login for the NASACA website and the login for the training package where they are separate. So you need a different login to get into the training package. Um, but the other and the main NASACA thing is on the 20th of May, there is a NASACA AGM in York, well, a conference and AGM in York. So we've got some good keynote speakers. We've got uh, Rachel D'Souza, the, the uh, sort of advocate for children who will be talking about uh, the big ambition um, for children. We've got Lap Blaylock, who has just retired as an RE advisor of many, many years. Um, and there will be uh, sort of table discussions and presentation of the uh, the findings from the annual reports and uh, talks about all of those kinds of things. There are also website uh, not websites webinars in the week uh, in the fortnight following. And if we have sufficient budget, each SACRE can send up to two people to. Uh, the conference um I, pl I plan to go so uh there's so one more place there is one more place is tracy yeah um in response to that I was asked to go away and find out what the the current position is in relation to this and the la is in a position to fund a place and expenses for this um for this agm okay so, Vicky, looks like you've hit the jackpot. Thank you, Tracy. I didn't. I was expecting to fund myself. So, if anybody else wants to come with me, I'll go halves. <laughs> so, um, but, but, thank you. Do you want, was there anything else to say on that? Uh, no. I mean, that's that's it, really. Um, if we've if we've decided who we're who who is going to uh, Nassica AGM on our behalf, that's great. Um, I will need to get one of my other sacres to send me, I think. Um, so otherwise, uh, yeah, I need to talk to NASACA and see what, see how that's working. Um, but any any feedback on the website, any feedback on any of the information on the website, uh, you know, do do send it to me. If you know, if you look or you're trying to find something, we still we know the search engine still doesn't work very well. There will be another briefing coming out soon with information about uh, about the conference and AGM. So even if you can't go, you will at least be able to see uh, what we're what we're going to be talking about. And I'm sure that Vicky will feed back fulsomely to us at the next Sacre meeting in July because she'll have had time to listen and process. I was going to spend all my time in the York Museum, but I have to go now. <laughs> <laughs> I might go to the Yorvik Centre. Whoops, no, not okay. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Moving on to the uh, to the newsletter. Yeah, um, I will be right putting together another newsletter for just after uh, the Easter holidays. So going out probably the week starting something like the 22nd of uh, April. I don't have the dates in my head. Yeah, week starting 22nd of April, I hope to have a, a newsletter going out. If anybody has um, anything that they, any articles that they would like to submit, uh, if they've done any school visits or if any schools have had visitors in, um, that would be really helpful because uh you know yet again it's it, it often ends up being my ideas that get put down that is not how it's meant to be um you know if if you have things that are are relevant and worth saying if if your community is producing books documents teaching resources Obviously, Alan, I've already uh, flagged up the Understanding Humanism website on many occasions, and I will do so again because I flag it up every time. Um, 
but you know if if there's a a new seek resource coming out if there's a fabulous seek website where you can find out about seek anything like that would be really helpful to be able to flag up because uh yes it did ron it came out in the last one because it was the one the feedback on the uh the hubs training so okay. yes yes i did yeah i did want, i did wonder um where's abby gone is she still there Abby, yeah, Abby's well, still there. Yeah, you mentioned you mentioned about the prayer spaces that uh, Kerith are doing. Is that the sort of thing? A little article on that? Was yes, that I can thing? find out some more information. Send it over. Yes. That would be fabulous. Yeah. So that's the sort of thing. What you know, sort of things that your local community is doing. Yeah, absolutely. Because otherwise, I can talk about all the national stuff, but what's going on in Bracknell Forest? Mm -hmm. Um. You know, is the Sikh community in Bracknell Forest, are they going to be out celebrating uh, Vaisakhi um, just before the newsletter goes out? Is Can we have an article about it? it you know, uh, Sev Day's gone, but actually something about Eid uh, when we get when she gets there would be really helpful or something about the experience of uh, doing Ramadan. Um you know, really helpful. And likewise, Aussie, um, I don't know whether we've missed Purim or um, probably have, but... Uh... Purim, Purim is this uh, Sunday week. Perfect. Yeah, so, perfect. Uh, you know, a, a report on something that you've, you've done, um, uh, you know, that, that, that happened in, in Purim, uh, how, how, Purim might be celebrated, uh, you know, particularly. Actually, I could do something nice about um, uh, the way we both teach and experience Purim by getting the children to perform a comic story of it. Yes. Which is a very different way of doing things. So, yeah, I'll yeah, try and, absolutely. I'll try that and would remember. Be... Thank could you, I... Ossie. That would, would be brilliant. Please email me. Please Certainly. Email me. Thank Certainly. You. I will do <clears> that. <throat> but that, you know, anything like that that gives teachers ideas because it may or may not be a central part of what they're teaching at any one point but you know in primary schools there is often space to do something to use something uh about a different uh a, a different event to inspire some writing and you know engage people where possible in keeping religion not just to religious education but broadening it out so, um, you know, articles greatly appreciated. Otherwise, it's the Anne Andrews newsletter again. And um... Thank you. <laughs> and you haven't got time. So can we move on to Tracy? Tracy, could I just ask, was there another, have we missed something out? Did you want to do some feedback on results in Bracknell? Is that, is that something that you wanted to speak about? Or is that just for me? Um, that you you have you have that also it will go yeah. into the um, it will go into our report anyway. I mean, in terms of you know, I can give a, a very lightweight. Did it actually go out to everybody? I don't think so, which is why I think it's not on the agenda. But I just it occurred to yeah. me you might want to just speak yeah. to the headline. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I've seen it either. No. You won't have had because um, obviously you get a slightly different version than than we get because I I go into a little bit more detail for you in terms of the um uh the results but just to give you um a little bit of an idea of, of the results we've now gone validated in terms of outcomes um nationally um fft so the numbers that we are talking about not one one pupil in bracknell forest makes a huge difference to what our data looks like um and is there anything that you would suggest yeah, needs to be just... added to that I was just going to say, I think we need to remind people that the vast majority of our secondary schools are actually academies. So, um, you know, they are not necessarily using our locally agreed syllabus. They're not necessarily uh, sort of preparing children with the RE curriculum that we are working on, uh, which is why... Um, I want to ensure that we produce some core plus with the numbers of good people going down uh, in taking 
uh, RS at uh, key stage four and key stage five. This is why I want to ensure that we put at least something into the syllabus that gives teachers something concrete to teach as part of core RS uh, and sixth, sixth form drop down days or however it might be done so that there's actually probably not statutory content, but some suggested content for them. So, uh, you know, that that data information is feeding into our thinking. But yeah, so thank you. just puts the context in. Yeah, that was very helpful. Thank you, Tracy. Would you like to talk now to the budget? Would I like to talk to the budget? Yes, I can indeed do that for you as well. Um, as I'm hoping everybody's had a quick look, there's not obviously significant amounts there. But um, obviously our budget this year was 1,950. You'll see that actually in terms of our um, outgoings, we were 3,175. The LA is fully aware of that. Um, and um, it, this is not anything unusual in terms of what happens with that. Um, it's, it's, it's checked and um, we watch it very closely on a, on a regular basis. My boss, uh, Zoe Livingston, head of standards, has meetings with finance in relation to it. Um, but as you can see, we've covered the key things that we would continue expected to, to cover in terms of things like, obviously, the subscriptions that we've talked about, the training packages, um, attendance, obviously, at the AGM, and obviously, um, the, one of the biggest um, contributors in terms of, obviously, our finances is Anne. And I'm sure all of you would agree we, we, we would be lost without Anne's contribution in terms of what she does. for. I, I don't get it. I don't get the money. No, goes you to don't the get the money. It, Just it to clarify, it goes to the diocese. <laughs> it goes to the diocese under, over, as part of an SLA. But obviously that covers the cost of, of Anne coming to work with us in Bracknell Forest. Um, the budget for, for next year is uh, exactly the same. It's to, uh, 1,950. Um, I believe that's been confirmed with you as well, Vicky, hasn't it? with yeah. uh, Zoe Livingston as well. So obviously we are currently in the process of closing down accounts as far, because obviously you'll appreciate we're coming to um, end of end of the financial year. Um, as you'll see, what's not on there is the, um, the money that has been allocated to cover the costs that are um, associated with boxes, et cetera. But I'm working very closely with Vicky in relation to that at this moment in time. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions about that? It is seven o'clock, so be aware of time. Um, is there any other business? I've got a quick question, uh, Vicky. I think I have a question for Tracy and um, Anne. Uh, I just want to interested how, how many uh, of our local secondary schools offer RE at A level? Do we have those? Bear with me. I can I can give you that answer. I can, I can email you as well. I'd be interested to know because I, I, I'm doing the rounds with my daughter for six form. What I found is the it's, it's only the independents that offer RE A level. Very, I think I have not come across I've got, Based on the information I have here, yeah, um, I can see that four of our four of the schools that sit within our Balrat boundaries, okay, are currently um, offering key, um, key stage five. And your other question, Majid? That was that was the main question. I think okay. I want to write you as well because it that. I guess the other question is, do we want to encourage more schools to offer it? The other thing is that some schools offer it as an EPQ, so fourth A level, that people can do either a term or a year on. So it gives them insight. And it's it's looking at also, is it something that's valued at university level if people are going to university? So that seems to be like a determining factor of which GCSs children do. So is that why it's not being offered? Because it's, it doesn't carry as much weight as another subject, say history or something. Yeah. Um, we could explore. It's a staffing issue. Not um, a waiting issue. So um, it's specialists, like you can get away with key stage three being taught by non-specialists, but GCSE and A-level has to be. Um, A-level definitely has to be a specialist. And so um, it's it's a limit on that. It's also the, the religions are dependent on it. So I know that one of the local schools does Islam, another one does Buddhism, um, because that's who they've got in their team. Um it, it is staffing dependent rather than value of the subject. I think we're going to have to, I think this is a really good conversation for next time because I think it feeds into our monitoring of RE in the borough. And I'm very conscious of time and that people have got, you know, to go to other things. If 
I noticed Anne's hand was up and Anna's hand was up. Bear in mind what I've said that we'll push this onto the agenda for next time. Are you happy with that, Anne? Anna, yeah. And Anne? Yeah, okay, good. Um, so any other business apart from that? You're all okay. Right, so the date of the... It's a national issue, Anne's saying. Yes, I think that's correct. But we will. We'll put it on the agenda for next time. Um, so the next meeting is the 9th of July, 2024. Uh, and then the other meetings are the 16th of October and the 5th of March. They are in the agenda, so you can copy them down into your diaries. Um, unless anybody wants to say anything else, I just wanted to thank you all and look forward to 